Welcome to our video. And today we would like to share with you our entrepreneur story and why we think that metrological data is continuously gaining an importance for sustainability and the energy sector. So maybe you would like to introduce yourself of, first? Of course. Thank you, Carmen. So my name is Holger Ruf and I studied electrical engineering and hold a PhD in renewable energy. I've been working now for around 10 years in the field of uh, photovoltaics and the planning of electric grids. Since 2022, I'm the managing director of P-Cubed R and I can look back on several national and international research projects and a huge network of experts. At P-Cubed R, I focus on um, the meteorological applications for infrastructure uh, operators and service providers. Yeah, and so now I will introduce myself. So I have a background in hairdressing, actually. So after school, I first uh, worked in hairdressing for three years. And after that, I studied mathematics and did a PhD in physics. Um, to be more specific, I did a PhD in phys uh, physics of the atmosphere. And I gained really valuable experience uh, working at the German Aerospace Center and the German Weather Service, working with numerical weather prediction models, and specifically like trying to optimize the numerical weather prediction models um, in the sector of renewable energy, for example, like optimizing the forecast of solar radiation. And that was before I founded the company, P cubed R. And then in 2017, it happened that I had so many projects at the same time, and then I just kind of also spontaneously created the company, P cubed R. And um, I think that it's, it's a nice founder story because uh, I did it without investments. And I, I didn't have any investors at all. I just, uh, for me, it was the case that I had projects going. I had a big network, and so I thought, like, hm, why not? And I really thought, like, okay, I might fail, but also, on the other hand, I could also succeed, but anyway, I will learn. And for me, one of the most important things in life is really to learn, and that is definitely something that I'm doing as the a founder and CEO of P cubed R. But now... Um, yeah, you're probably uh, interested in how uh, the, the company have come, like, continued to grow. It grew, by example, for example, by um, yeah, we have people joining the team that I met along the way in the career, like Holger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we met, I think, around 10 years ago at a summer school in Southern France on the topic of uh, yeah, energy meteorology for renewable applications. And I think it was on the, on the way back after the summer school, back to the airport on the bus transfer, you invited me for an internship to the German Weather Service. And of course, I agreed. And uh, it was a lot of fun going to Offenbach and work with all this uh, numerical weather prediction data. And so that, that was the starting point. And you love data. You still yes, do have yes. data. Was always, yeah, we had a lot of fun. We still have a lot of fun. I think that is something that is very special about us, that we're really passionate about what we're doing. We're very passionate about working together as well. And yeah, we really enjoy that. Uh, but what do we actually do at P cubed R the whole day? Um, so what we do is that we basically, we provide customized weather and climate and earth observation data. We filter out uh, the relevant information for our customers because there's just this huge amount, of vast amount of data available, especially also in the meteorological sector. And so we kind of choose for the customers what they really need. And also what we're able is to really combine the different data sources to increase the usefulness for the customer. Because um, we see also on the slide at the moment that uh, there's, for example, we see a now, now casting approach for precipitation. And that has different uh, so data sources to it. And we developed a machine learning appro approach to have that forecast for every five minutes for two hours. Um, what we also do is that, that we provide consulting for companies that actually already use weather data to kind of help them optimize what data they use. And we also develop software solutions also to post-process data, for example, because, yeah, as I was just explaining, uh, that there's just so many data. There are like, um, in the Earth observation, if you look at it, if I mean, uh, we have, of course, we have weather forecasts, we have climate projections, we have every day, we have a lot of Earth observation data, we have satellite data, remote sensing, everything, we have a lot of measurements, and all of that, all of the data we have, and that uh, is a, a tons of, a tons of petabytes already uh, of, of the data available, and so that, we, you really can tell that it's really important to know, like, 
what kind of data do I pick out, what kind of data is helpful for me at the company. And for us, like having worked with numerical weather prediction models, for example, and really being in there coding, uh, we really understand also like what kind of challenges there is for forecasting. We understand what kind of models are better in which situation and why. And we understand the physics behind it. And I think that is really great. And we can also uh, bring that back to the customer and really explain um, what's happening here out there in the atmosphere. And we love to share this knowledge. Yeah. I will give you a short example for applications of meteorology, um, especially the energy meteorology. It's the part where I have come from, and energy meteorology is a current field of research at the interface of renewable energies and the atmospheric physics, and it affects all energy systems, all sectors of the energy system. If we take a look at the electrical energy system, for example, we can distinguish between generation transport, distribution, and consumption. And the impact of weather on the increasing share of uh, renewables is obvious. So solar power plants and windmills are strongly directly dependent on the weather. So if there is no sun and no wind blows, there is no power production. But also conventional power plants are influenced by the weather. Think uh, on the cooling water requirements of nuclear power plants. They are affected uh, and influenced by draws and high air temperature. Or also the transport of uh, fuels to the power plants on ships on, on the rivers when the river levels are extreme low. It's also affecting the transport capacity of the ships. Electricity must be transported from the plants to the load centers. Here, storms and their consequences are a risk for the overhead power lines. But also temperature, solar radiation and wind also influence the transport and the transmission capacity. By taking all these parameters into account, capacities can be increased in some extent. And in the local distribution network where I am coming from, uh, with this multitude of uh, operational equipment with thousands of transformer stations and millions of kilometers of cables and overhead lines, there are further weather dependencies. Extreme rainfalls, for example, flood, flooding damaged assets. And there, one product of mm. our company, of PQPR, is um, the, yeah, the rain now casting and uh, also the yeah, flood warning for operators of the infrastructure. At last, but not least, uh, the consumer side is, we are all consumers. We are all consumers of the power grid and also the, the consumption is uh, yeah, dependent on temperature, on, on the weather. Uh, so for one example is the temperature dependence on, of the consumption for heating systems. If the outside temperature decreases and it drops, the electricity demand for the electric heating systems increases and vice versa. In hot countries, the, this correlation is also uh, existing for the cooling and air conditioning. So in summary, the knowledge on weather and weather forecast supports the power of plant operators, the network operators and all of us as co consumers. All these are today's uh, applications. but. We also require long-term information, taking into account the climate change. If a grid operator today installs some new equipment because of the integration of renewables or electromobility, these assets not are only running for years, they are running for decades. And then it naturally raises the questions, what are the environmental conditions in the next 30 or 40 years? What temperature will be there? And what is the new normal? What extreme weather situations will occur? And this is where we also collect and uh, provide data from the climate projections to our uh, clients. But also the meteorological system can also benefit from the large amount and the tons of measurement data provided by the energy system, by all the local measurements of, of the decentralized power plants. Because we absolutely love measurement data, of course, especially if it's high quality and we really can assess um, the error or hopefully a little error only. And especially if we have long time series, for example, for measurements and all of those of the high standard measurements help us to on the one hand side to verify and validate our models, but on the other side also helps us for, for example, machine learning applications. 
in general, I mean, what I was saying before that we have these huge and vast amount of data. So per se, meteorological data is great to uh, apply, for example, artificial intelligence applications and in general for data sciences. But also, but especially in um, artificial intelligence, um, it will have major effects on creating solutions for sustainability, climate change, and other environmental issues. In the future, we see an increased role of the application of meteorological data, its interpretation, and its input in AI, AI applications for various fields. And the energy sector is just one of many of these sectors. So, thank you. Thank you for watching. So in case you have any questions about meteorological data, about how we founded our company, what we're doing, just feel free to contact us.